How's it going? Skyler here from One RV Center. Today we're taking a look at a Catalina. In the front, you have an electric tongue jack. So you have two switches. The first one's just for the light, and the second one is what raises and lowers the front end. To manually use it, you just pull the cap off, and you would stick your crank down in there and crank away. For your LP tanks, you have two 20-pound LP tanks with an automatic switchover regulator. Whichever way your indicator is pointing is the tank it's going to pull from first. When you turn your first tank on, the regulator will turn green. If you have both your tanks turned on, once your first tank runs out, you will automatically start pulling from your second tank. And at that time, you would just switch it over to the other tank, turn your first one off, take it off, and go get it filled. Behind your LP tanks is your 12-volt deep cycle battery. And right on the very front is your battery disconnect. So when it's turned sideways, pointing towards the on, battery's connected. When it's down, your battery is disconnected. Going around the camper here, in each, four, each of the four corners you have a manual stabilizer jack. It does come with a crank to use those, but you can also use a drill and a three quarter inch socket. A nice big front pass through storage area. And your doors are magnetic, is what holds them up. The awning on here is a Lippert awning, so Lara awning. All your lights and everything are controlled from inside. To adjust the tilt of your awning, you'll come right up here and pinch it on the top, and then you can slide that arm in and out. The steps on here are the Lippert solid steps. So all you do when you're ready to travel, you just lift them up, and they fold right inside the trailer. To adjust them, you have a pin on each side that you would pull the pin and the leg will move in and out. And then you have your standard swing out assist rail that you would close in front of the door when you travel. Right underneath your window you have your coax output and 110 outlets so you can have a TV outside if you wanted to. And then you have the suburban gas electric water heater. On the water heater in the bottom left corner you'll see an on off switch. That is for the electric side. And then inside the trailer, you have a switch for the gas side of the water heater. Above your water heater is your refrigerator, your range vent. So you have the two tabs on the bottom. You pop both of those out for it to vent. And below that, you have your refrigerator vent. And then you would just turn these a quarter turn to pop it off and clean it out in there. Below that is your furnace exhaust. Don't put anything in front of it. Now on here, if you look at your wheels, the center cap pops off. And behind that's a rubber plug, and behind that is a grease zerk to where you can grease your axles very easily. Above your finish skirt, you have your black tank flush valve, and above that, you have your fresh water fill. When you fill your fresh water tank, make sure you watch your monitor panel and only fill it to where it says full. Don't let it run until it's squirting back out at you. The rear door is just an entry for the bathroom. And then you have your outside kitchen area. So the refrigerator is 110 only. It has to be plugged in for this refrigerator to work. Uh, the drawers you have to lift up before you pull out. In this drawer you have your LP hose. So what you would do is connect the LP hose to the back side of the griddle here. And then underneath the trailer you have a LP quick connect. Now this slide does lock into place here. To release it, you push both of these down, and then it slides in, and again locks into place. Uh, your sink out here is plumbed into the rest of the trailer, and then you have plenty of cabinet space in here as well. Your bumper plugs do pull out to where you can store a sewer hose in there, and then you have the tailgate storage system that you would just pull the pin on each side, and it would flip down for travel. When you do travel with it down, you need to take your spare tire off. That way you're not dragging the road or picking anything up with your spare tire. If you look at the top and the center, you are prepped to have a Furion backup system. Uh, I would recommend you go with the observation system. It works just like a rearview mirror. As far as slide outs, you have two slides on here. Not a whole lot of maintenance you have to do. Just check your seals, make sure they're still rubbery, and when you pull on them, they go back to where they were originally. If you look right underneath this rear slide, you have a drain 
That's going to be a gray tank green. And then right, if you look at the drain system again on this side, the gray handle is going to be for your bathroom shower, bathroom sink, and the black handle on the right is going to be for the toilet holding tank. Right in front of those, you have a red and blue line hanging down. Those are your low point drains for when you're getting ready to winterize. And then in between the slides, you have your outside shower that would just hang on the sidewall. You also have your 50 amp power connection. And behind the, the 50 amp plug, you have your city water connection. In the front of the trailer, you have your cable satellite input and just the other side of that passenger storage which right now has your cranks and your 50 amp power cord. So the control panel on your Catalina here, you have your monitor panel, so you have your fresh water gauge, your battery. On this one you're going to use black one and gray one. The gray one's going to be uh, for your bathroom and all your different gray water sources and then you have your slide out buttons up it brings them in down puts them out your awning switch is backwards so up extends it down or tracks it two different switches the exterior switch is for the awning lights when you use your awning lights you have to make sure that you're using the awning remote as well and then you have your interior lights which is the main ceiling lights when you first walk in Beside that, the two red switches. The first one's your water pump switch, and then you have your gas water heater switch. Turning around to the bedroom area in here, you have dual USB charging ports on each side of the bed, as well as, well as 110 outlets. You do have storage underneath your bed when you lift it up. On the back wall is where you're going to have your TV prep area. And keep in mind that the light above the bed is on a switch, but your night lights are a center push button. And then you have the emergency exit window on the driver's side. Coming back out here, on this setup, you have a Connex TV, which is also your radio. Uh, if you look at the sticker on it, it's a 40 inch Connex TV. It's still your dual zone, so you'll have inside outside controls. FM radio, Bluetooth, it's got front and rear USB inputs and USB charging ports on the front. So what it is, the front here just pops down and you can see the USB charging ports and HDMI. Other than that, it's going to work just like your standard TV. When you pull your TV out, if you look on this side over here, you have a green light, which is your antenna booster so if you're wanting to use your roof antenna the green light has to be on when you hit that little button and the green light goes off you'll be using the outside cable satellite port your fireplace is a very easy fireplace to use um, there are buttons on the fireplace right up in here and it also comes with a remote control so when you turn it on you can control uh, the, the brightness different colors you can also set a timer and different heat settings as well. Your kitchen area, you have a pull down faucet. To turn it on, you just pull the lever towards you and then left and right is what adjusts your temperature. You can remove the trays in here. It's a single basin sink. The light above your faucet, again, is a center push button to turn it on and off manually. Your microwave is gonna work just like your standard household microwave. And then your range, the glass top folds open. And then to light it, all you would do is turn it to the fire picture on the knob. And then turn the igniter. To light your oven, you would just open your door. Turn this to the fire picture, the right knob. Hold it in and turn your sparker till the pilot light ignites. You have a light switch on this side. So up is just for the ring lights. Down is ring lights and your oven light.
The refrigerator in here is a Norcold refrigerator. There's one button to turn it on and off, which is right in the center. So you would hold it to turn it off, and then a quick push turns it on. If the light is green, that means it's running on electric. If the light is orange, that means it's running on gas. Uh, and that's really all there is to your Norco refrigerator. Your slide out, all the lights in here are controlled individual. So like this one has your standard center push button. And then the other lights have black buttons on them. The one on the wall is at the bottom. And this one's right up here at the top. Your sofa does lay down into a bed. It's just a standard jackknife sofa. And then your dinette does lay down into a bed as well. Going into the bathroom area, you do have the outside door. This one has just your standard shower with a Thetford foot flush toilet. And then above your stool is where you have your fan. You have to manually crank it up and then you can see the little black switch there in the corner to turn the fan on and off. If you look right below your cabinets here is where your breaker panel, fuse panel is. So breakers are on the left, fuses are on the right. When you have a fuse blow, you will see a little red LED light come on, indicating that you have an issue. As we walk into the bunkhouse here on the left side is where your thermostat is. So this thermostat is going to control your furnace and your front air conditioner. To turn your AC on, the left button you'll slide all the way to the left. And then to turn your furnace on, the left switch you slide all the way to the right. As far as the auto fan, just leave that on the auto setting. That way you don't have any issues. And then in the bunkhouse area, you have a second thermostat on the wall here, which is going to control the bunkhouse AC. The only thing you really have to do is make sure that you can divert the airflow kind of point it up so it isn't blowing directly on the thermostat so you don't have any issues underneath the bunk here is where your TV prep area is and then when you travel the top bunk and the slide out you want to have locked in the up position 